Hello Internet. I wanted to make this video to explain that my recommendation for your very first distribution into Linux has changed to Monjero, specifically Monjero KDE. And here's why. Low tech Linux. So I used to recommend that you install Kubuntu as your first one. And I still really like Kubuntu. If Monjero doesn't work out for you, hit that Kubuntu up. They still do an awesome job. Now there's a lot of Linux distributions out there that are easy to install. So that's not terribly that big of a deal breaker maker. But this is an Arch base. And Arch is notoriously hard to install. In my 20 years of Linux, I have never successfully installed Arch. And I've tried a few times. But it's just when you can install one graphically in five minutes. Why would I do one non-graphically that took maybe days? I'm not going to do it. Monjero is really easy to install. Number two, awesome driver support. This one is awesome. Now, again, there's other distributions that has awesome hardware support. If you go into your settings in KDE, it's right here. You click this button to auto install open source drivers. Done. If I had proprietary driver, uh, proprietary items on here and I needed proprietary drivers, I would also have a button that said in auto install proprietary drivers. I don't, so I don't have the button, but it would be there if I had, say, an NVIDIA or Broadcom wireless. Easy updates. Check. Couple ways you can update. Right here's your update manager. When there's a little red dot right there, that means you have updates available. If you click that, you can click the updates. It'll bring up a graphical user interface that has your updates. Or you can do as I do. Yakawake is installed by default, which is activated by F12. Once I hit F12, the last command that I put in was to update. So all I have to do is hit the up arrow. I hit enter. I put in my password. Okay, I have updates available, and you saw how easy it was for me to activate those updates. I'm going to hit yes. I'm going to hit F12. That's going to go bye-bye, and all my updates are going to happen in the background. We'll get back to that shortly. Rolling release. Why are rolling releases awesome? Because one of the problems with Kubuntu and any of the Ubuntu brands, Debian, Fedora, Red Hat, they all have a release cadence. They release a version, you update to that version. You use that version for six or eight months or a year, whatever their cadence is. In the case of Ubuntu, LTSs are two years. Standard releases every six months. You can also get on the testing, so you're updating as the development progresses, but that's not actually a release. Rolling release is kind of like you stay on the development version permanently and as they release updates you get those updates forever there is no release cadence they do a snapshot every now and then so that if you go download their new installer it's not two years behind it's a month behind or so that's the only time that there's a snapshot involved once it's installed on your system if you keep it updated you will be near bleeding edge and that brings us to bleeding edge. Monjero is near bleeding edge and I say near bleeding edge because Arch is bleeding edge. Monjero is based on bleeding edge. Your Arch Linux updates go into Monjero unstable. If they are security updates that need to happen right now they are pushed out to your system right away. If they are not security updates that have to happen right now, they will go into testing for usually two weeks before they pushed, are pushed to your system. That's just to make sure that those of us crazy enough to be on the testing or on the unstable, we get hit by whatever bug might happen during the update so that you don't have to. To get on to testing or on unstable is actually really easy. I might put that out in another video, but not this one. The next one, easy to install kernels. If you go down here to this one, if it's not showing up down here, just click your up arrow, it'll be right here. Right click, and then left click on kernels. It is this easy to install new kernels. 
I am running the 5.6. When I installed this, the default was the 5.4 LTS, and it's still recommended. I'm running the 5.6, which gave me an amazing boost in Steam Proton for games. If you're on Manjaro, if you're on anything and you can install 5.6, I highly recommend it. But all you do is click install, apply, put in your password, your new kernel's installed. Now, once it's installed, it will automatically update this kernel. So when updates come in, if there's an update for 5.6 kernel, they will automatically happen. I don't have to come back into this. Steam. Steam is installed and ready out of the box. You don't have to install Steam because it's already there. Once you install your system, Steam is already on there. All you have to do is bring it up and log in. That's it. Everything that needs to happen is already installed. One side note about Steam. When you go to look up a game, and I'll use my the game that I play, Neverwinter Online, as an example. When you bring up Neverwinter Online, it will tell you it does not play on Steam Proton. I assure you it does. If you click play game, you will not be able to play the game. You need to go into Steam settings. Steam play. Click this right here that says enable Steam play for all other titles. This may or may not work for you depending on your game. How do you know if it's going to work for your game? Well, you're going to have to go to Steam Proton DB. ProtonDB.com. Look up your game. Neverwinter has a silver rating. Because it has a silver rating, it's not going to automatically work without you clicking the work for other titles. When you bring it up, listed silver. You can see what everything is listed as. Some are saying it's playable, some are saying it is not. This is a lot to do with try it on your own. This is my last report. I'm going to file another one shortly. On my system with the AMD video card, it worked at straight out of the box. I didn't have to do a thing to it. Neverwinter runs incredibly well. Just as good on this system as any Windows machine I've ever had. I can even tab out, go into other programs and return to Neverwinter, it's still working. Awesome forums and community. You get lost, can't figure it out. There's Facebook discussion for Monjero, there's Reddit for Monjero, and there's Monjero Linux forum. Forum.monjero.org. Very friendly people, I've not had any issues whatsoever. I've tried to install Arch many occasions, and the few times that I've asked questions, I was told RTFM, not very friendly. Monjero, I've not had that problem. And the last one is the DE recommendation. DE stands for Desktop Environment. KDE, I kid you not, K originally started as the word cool, spelled with a K. Cool Desktop Environment. Or XFCE. I recommend these two. On the Monjero homepage, they have three fully supported distributions or versions XFCE. KD Plasma and GNOME. I will never, ever recommend GNOME. That's for a discussion another day. My first preference is KDE Plasma. It's lightweight, it's fancy, it's got a lot of bells and whistles. My next one is XFCE. If KDE has too many bells and whistles, too many options, give XFCE a try. And I will even say give GNOME a try. You may like it, you may prefer it. Thank you for watching this recommendation. Be sure and like and subscribe. Thank you for watching these recommendations. Be sure to like and subscribe. Big shout out and a big thanks to my son with the laptop that you've all heard about for several episodes. He's running KDE. He's editing my videos on Kden Live and they're turning out awesome.